Welcome back to the God's Peculiar People podcast. The verse of the week is found in Romans 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Looking through the scriptures, you will not find the words amazing and grace found together uh, in the King James Bible. But throughout scripture... We find the truths of God's amazing grace to man. One of the first places you find the word grace in the Bible is in connection with Noah, whom God would save from the flood, destroying the entire earth, but saving that one just man. Later, we find it again with the thief on the cross, when he believes who Jesus is, and Jesus shows him grace and tells him that he will be with him in paradise. So throughout scripture, we see the amazing grace grace that God provides. Of course, the person who wrote about amazing grace is John Newton, made it famous in his hymn uh, about amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Since this episode is coming out uh, right after Easter and Resurrection Sunday, we thought it would be a great time to continue to be reminded about the amazing grace that God has given us. What took place on that day in Calvary when Jesus died to pay for our sins and three days later when he rose again, defeating death. So we plan to do episodes uh, about John Newton in the future, probably a whole series about him. But this is just a brief reminder about John Newton's life and about the hymn Amazing Grace. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. These words were penned by John Newton, a former sailor, slave trader, who got saved and completely transformed and changed his life. His early years and his latter years, those people who would meet him later in life would probably be shocked to have seen the difference in this man. But yet the words of this song from Amazing Grace show us that John Newton realized the difference that God had made in his life. So for a few moments, I want to talk about John Newton and the song Amazing Grace. So as I mentioned, John Newton started out as a very rebellious young man. He got in trouble with his father, with the Royal Navy, and with other captains that he sailed under. And yet it was one night during a storm that things began to change for John Newton. John Newton is quoted as saying from an event that happened on March 9th and 10th, 1748. He wrote, The 10th of March is a day much remembered by me. I have never suffered it to pass unnoticed since the year 1748. The Lord came from on high and delivered me out of deep waters. It was during a brutal storm that John Newton cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him. It would take several years before John Newton's life would change to become the songwriter and preacher that many people know him as today. But he did begin that transition that day. He's known for writing many songs. He helped to put together a hymn book with William Cooper. 22 of his songs are considered fairly well known, but his most well known are of course Amazing Grace and Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. John Newton didn't originally plan to title the song Amazing Grace, but rather Faith's Review and Expectation. The song is based on Newton's study of 1 Chronicles 17, verses 16 through 17, which say, And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the state of a man of high degree, O Lord God. We see in the story of John Newton and the story of David, the king of Israel, that both realized how 
lowly and humble their beginnings were, and yet how greatly the Lord was using them. David would become the king of Israel, the the man after God's own heart. And John Newton, though he didn't know it then, would go on to have one of the most beloved and well-known songs in the world. It's estimated that the song Amazing Grace is sung 10 million times every year in performances, at funerals, at special occasions around the world. So what is so special about this song? Amazing Grace. Well, the fact that grace has been given to us by God is amazing. If you look up the word grace in the Bible, just the word grace, you will find it's used 159 times in the Bible. Its first mention is in relation to Noah, where it's said says in Genesis 6 verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah who chose to live for God, rather than being destroyed in the flood along with those who rejected God, would be given grace by God to live, to go into an ark with himself and his family, with animals, and to be preserved through that time that God would destroy the earth and all those who lived on it. That was God's grace towards Noah. We see God's grace towards Abraham in giving him a son, giving him an heir. God's grace towards the nation of Israel throughout their history, giving them time and time again space to repent and to turn to him. The last time grace, the word grace is found in the Bible is in Revelation 22 verse 21 where it says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Grace today we know comes through Jesus Christ. Anyone who will trust in Him can have salvation, which is freely given, because God is gracious. Grace is defined in the Bible as getting what we do not deserve. Yet God shows grace by sending His Son to die on the cross to pay for sins, so that we can have our sins forgiven and a home with Him in heaven. All of these things must have been going through John Newton's mind as he wrote the song Amazing Grace. I don't want to take the time to to break down every single word and and line, but if you look at it and, and read the words of the song, there's so much biblical truth here. This wasn't just a, a haphazard, let's throw some words together and create a song. This was well thought out. An explanation of how amazing God's grace is towards us. Now, in our hymn books today, we we mainly have just four verses that we sing. But there are at least seven verses that I know of. There's potentially more. um, But I want to read those seven verses so you can hear uh, each of them. Uh, So let me start with the first verse. It says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yet when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun prepare to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Those words are so powerful. I, I'm always so sad to see hymn books only having you know, the, the, the three, maybe four verses of the song. Because each of them is so... There's so much power to it. So much richness in it. Talking about you know, God's promises. His word. Through his word my hope is secure. He will my shield and portion be. As long as life endures. 
And when we've been there 10,000 years, John Newton, he goes beyond the space of time. Many, many songs are focused on, on the past, what Jesus has done, or on the, the present, you know, what we're feeling right now. But this song, with his last verse, he goes beyond into eternity, talking about when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days. We've been with God, well, I've been with God for 10,000 years, but there's no end. There's no, oh, we gotta, wait, we're gonna have to finish this up. We gotta wrap this up soon. We gotta go. There's other things we have to do. No, there, there's no deadlines. We can go on and on. We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. I think we'd, be, we'd become a little, you know, casual with the song Amazing Grace. That uh, is something that we know the words to. We, we're used to it. It just, uh, you know, we can get through it. We don't even need the hymn book, maybe. We can just you know, sing the words and, and go on. But... It's important to take the time sometimes to look at these words, uh, to go back and actually be able to find the scripture and, and what the what the meaning was behind why the song was written. Uh, you, know, John Newton saw David's exclamation of, you, know, that was spoken of thy, thy servant's house for a great generation, and you, know, and what is my house? You, know, who am I that you have been so amazing? To me, so gracious to me, and then John Newton, you he applies that to himself, and you know, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that that sound of amazing grace is so sweet, and that it saved a wretch like me. I know in some in some hymn books it's been changed to you know, uh, that saved a sinner like me or, or different words, but the the strength of the word wretch, the the idea that you're wretched, you're miserable that saved a wretch like me, John Newton realized his position. He wasn't, you know, clean and shiny and, you know, a good boy that, you know, got saved. No, he realized that he was a sinner. A sinner who needed a savior. And that comes through in his writing of this song. His parallel of looking at David's life and looking at his own. Um, it's an amazing song. So I would encourage you to take a, take a little bit of time. Go and look at the words. You can Google them online or grab a hymn book. But look at the words that John Newton wrote. And think about how that applies to Scripture. Things that you've seen and learned in Scripture. It might help you to appreciate the song a little bit more. Or give you a fresh perspective on it. So I highly encourage you to do that. Um... Also, if you want to learn more about John Newton, he has, uh, there appears to be like two biographies that he wrote, uh, autobiographies that are written by him. One, I believe, is called Amazing Grace, and another is called like uh, In the Depth, something like that. Um, and there's also a biography written um, by Jonathan Aitken, I believe it is. It's called John Newton from Disgrace to Amazing Grace. Uh, there's also a movie, I forget the name of the movie at the moment, that uh, talks about the abolitionist movement in the UK and kind of ties in, it might be actually called Amazing Grace if I remember correctly, um, that ties in the story of John Newton with uh, the abolitionist movement in the Britain. So that could be an interesting um, story something to watch. I'm not the biggest fan of the movie. I, I like it from um, historical aspect, but looking at it from um, a telling of John Newton's life, I don't like it as much, but it would be something worth checking out. So I know this podcast is a little bit short, but I don't know. Sometimes keeping it short and sweet is the better idea. So uh, I hope you enjoy this short episode. Uh, go take a listen to... Um, the words of Amazing Grace, whether you listen to them, listen to a recording, or read them yourself, go and take a few moments to do that. And uh, tune in next time for the next Study with the Ant podcast. <laughs>